Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to return to the idea of Planet 9 because these scientists in their search for this unusual, mysterious but still missing planet have actually discovered another really cool object that is now a record holder for the farthest object in the solar system. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So it's been about two years now since we actually even started actively looking for Planet 9, but still haven't found it. Despite its apparent possible size and mass, we have no idea where it is, even though technically we have already established a potential orbit for it, based on the observation of other objects that have actually been influenced by it. Now, very recently, the Carnegie University uh, published a very interesting article uh, by Scott Shepard, where he actually talked about an yet another object that he just discovered that had very similar uh, unusual orbit to Sedna. But this object is even farther away than Sedna. So the object I'm talking about has actually been discovered about three years ago, but it's only now that we were able to pinpoint its actual trajectory. And the object I'm referring to is this right here, 2015 TG387, also known as Goblin, because, well, it was actually discovered around Halloween. Now, this object, um, although not particularly exciting in any way, because it's basically a little rock that's about 300 kilometers in diameter, just barely making it to the dwarf planet uh, classification, is actually, surprisingly, the object with the farthest um, apoapsis. In other words, at its farthest from the sun, it's the farthest object in our solar system that we've discovered so far. Its apoapsis um, is close to about 2300 astronomical units, which is basically 2300 times the distance of Earth uh, from the sun. This is that point right here, and it's basically tremendously, tremendously far away. But we were only able to detect it because it's actually pretty close to the sun right now at its periapsis. Although, in the next few hundred years, it's actually going to move away uh, and then go to its farther part of the orbit, and so it's going to be invisible to us um, for approximately 35 to 36,000 years. Its single orbit around the Sun, or essentially one year here, lasts close to about 40,000 years. This is how extreme this object is. And once again, this object actually points at the existence of Planet 9 because of its unusual orbit. It's actually far away from everything else in our solar system, it's definitely not influenced by other planets. It's very far away from Neptune, so its orbit cannot be explained in any other way except for hypothetical Planet 9 that's causing it to have this unusual orbit. The current classification for these objects is Extreme Transneptunian Object, also known as ETNO, and uh, this particular object is also part of a Sednoid family, which is basically a family of Sednas. And uh, there's, there's like four of them, and this one is the most extreme, basically beating all previous records that were held by Sedna itself. Although, because it's actually much smaller than Sedna, um, it's very surprising that we were able to even find this. If you were to compare this to Sedna, in terms of actual size, you can see how small it is. It's actually very, very, very tiny. Way smaller than our moon, and way, way smaller than uh, most other dwarf planets we've discovered. And here's how it compares to our own moon. You can see it's basically... A rock that's about the size of a single crater on the moon. So in that sense it's actually really tiny. But we think there is actually thousands of these objects out there and all of them eventually will help us discover where Planet 9 is. Because we think that these objects, uh, so objects like Goblin and Sedna, actually have a very interesting relationship with the hypothetical Planet 9 that you see right there because uh, it's probably influencing their orbit in the same way that Neptune has a relationship with Pluto Planet 9 has a relationship with these other objects and basically is forcing them to have these unusual, strange, prolongated orbits. However, I also speculated in one of the previous videos that maybe, just maybe, one of these objects, or even several of these objects, are actually in the orbit around Planet 9 because it's interesting that this object is so far away and so massive that it can have a moon around itself as far as 10 distances uh, of Earth to the Sun, basically 10 AU, uh, or even more. Uh, it really depends on where Planet, Planet 9 is located, but you can see that 
at this distance of close to about 9 AU, you can actually have a stable moon around it. And I think maybe this is what is going to help us find this object. Once we discover one of its moons and we can kind of see an unusual object moving in funny ways around an empty space, we will probably be able to see Planet 9 as well. Unless, of course, we see it first. Now, it's actually very likely that we're going to discover more and more of these objects similar to Goblin here. And it's very possible that we might even have a completely new classification for them because they are very different from pretty much all of the other dwarf planets in our solar system and have very unique orbits, very unusual pathways, and possibly even have their own kind of a structure that's different from other objects in our solar system. But until then, and until we discover Planet 9, we can only speculate about what it really is and what's causing these objects to actually have such unusual orbits. And anyway, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. And before we finish, let's go back to our planet Earth and imagine what would happen if an object similar to Goblin actually crashed onto the surface of our planet. Now, because it's so far away from us, it's very, very unlikely. But because it has uh, a chance of actually losing its orbit one day, it might happen. You never know. So this is what would happen if it actually collided with our planet. A very extremely large explosion that would most likely annihilate all life on our planet. Anyway, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't and share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and maybe even consider supporting this channel and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye bye.